You see Pluto and Charon, and there it goes. And we have to go through what we call the keyhole, that little green spot that you see there. And that is the, the distance we have to be precisely. Right now, at the start of this press conference, the spacecraft was 658,000 miles from Pluto. So after 3 billion miles and a little over, we're just that far away. So 7.50 tomorrow morning, you will celebrate we're there. And then at 9 o'clock tomorrow evening, you'll hear the signal that was sent at around 4.20 in the afternoon at the speed of light actually getting back to the Earth. So we'll all have a real celebration at that time. It's kind of unfinished business. It's the last check mark in the initial reconnaissance of the solar system in many people's books. I've been saying for some weeks that until we start actually seeing Pluto resolve in the Lori instrument, it was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. And then all of a sudden, it's like the freight train's coming down the track, and you're seeing this light coming at you, and you know it's not going to stop. You can't slow it down. It's going to get there. And of course, the light is Pluto, and we're all excited. We have seven instruments on board the spacecraft. You can see them here. And they sample uh, the Pluto system with everything we've got, from the ultraviolet to the visible, the infrared. The instruments are fixed on the body of the spacecraft. So if we want to take an image of Pluto, we have to turn to point the cameras at Pluto. As we're getting closer to the Pluto system, you can see that Pluto and Charon are getting larger in the fields of view of the targets. Now we're near closest approach. Right here, we're taking data that if you could transport Central Park to Pluto, you would be able to identify the ponds in Central Park. We've discovered that Pluto's a little bit larger than we anticipated. We now have good measurements of its diameter and its radius. Its radius is 1,100 in 85 kilometers, plus or minus 10. That settles the debate about the largest object in the Kuiper belt. It also has important scientific implications. Because it's larger, and we've known its mass very precisely for a long time, that means it's a little less dense, which will raise the fraction of ice in the interior that modelers um, will need to compensate the rock in the interior.